All right, this is James with First Updates Now. I'm here in Huntsville, Alabama at the beautiful Rocket City Regional. We have one of the OGs of First, Team 233 here with us today. Gabby and Nick are gonna go over some of the cool mechanical stuff they've done this year. And later, and they're gonna go into more depth about the originations and their decision to go back to using the pink arm. Today on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. All right, first up, Gabby, you're gonna go over some of the stuff you decided to do mechanically on the robot. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna start off with, of course, oh, sorry. So of course we did the pink arm this year. It's what we're known for. We created it in the past years, but this year we actually decided to take it a step further than we usually do. The arm it actually itself is made out of bent sheet metal, which is all water jetted and bent, so that if something does break inside, instead of having to remove the whole arm and put something brand new on, we are able to take off just sides of it to fix what's in the inside. And it actually, um, is a, it's just a telescoping arm. The definition of a pink arm is a telescoping arm on a pivot. But this one, we actually decided to put on a full 360 turret. So when in matches, since our um, gripper doesn't go backwards and forwards, our turret would be able to spin fully for us. So when we're coming back, the drivers are able to focus on driving the robot and the tower is able to focus on spinning the turret and being able to um, score. All right, so you brought up how you're able to focus on using the, the tower for scoring. When you guys actually go in to, to feed, do you prefer to actually have the human do the adjustments, or does the robot handle that with the turreting? So actually, during these few competitions, we've learned that we like to smash up against one of those two sidewalls. We smash up against the sidewall, so we're in the same position every single time. So when we're picking them up, the human player should be able to angle it for us. And when we're scoring, we're able to move the turret for min like a few like minuscule adjustments to make sure that we're right on that pole because we almost never miss because of that now. All right, really cool, really cool. And Nick, you want to go over some more of the subsystems? All right. So this year, our intake, we started off with two tines, which uh, ran on a box tube back and forth. The concept was that we could flip over cones from any orientation and then grab them and place them. But we ended up just going to the driver's station most of the time. So we decided to change our intake to these rollers, which we've had a lot more luck with because with the tines, we actually were dropping cones a lot. Um, and so last year, you guys were one of the people who adopted Swerve. This year, since it's a very, another, very, uh, another game where Swerve will be very, very helpful, not a lot of people did Swerve and the turret. Now you went. Now Gabby went over a little bit why you guys have it because the arm doesn't go all the way back and forth. But how does the swerve and the turret actually work together and not fight each other and become redundant? So we actually drive up and then we do all our fine adjustments with the turret for picking up and placing uh, game pieces. And this way, it's a little bit faster on our cycle times because you don't have to worry about as many uh, degrees of freedom when you go to actually place your game pieces. So a lot of the macro stuff is in the big adjustments is handled by the drivetrain while the micro stuff with the, is handled by the turret. So once you're out there, the turret's handling it as opposed to driving back and forth. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. All right, and then also just everybody this year, everybody's interested in the April tags versus the, versus the vision tape. You guys do have a limelight that's going, that's going on. Did you guys decide to go full April tag, April tag and vision tape or just vision tape? So originally we were planning on going with the April tags, but we didn't have enough software time to actually pull that off. So now this just uh, provides a feed of video to our driver station. Uh, and we have a little crosshair on it so that our drivers can see the poles and line up on them. 
All right, really cool stuff. A nice combination of old school first with, man with manual dead reckoning stuff and really, really pretty water jetting and custom machining. I really hope that you guys are able to continue uh, continue on this season. It's going to be very, very tough, uh, very, very tough from this week on. But I really, really hope that this robot's able to show itself off some more. This is James with first updates now, and Gabby and Nick signing off. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, analysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.